See, this is a problem I'm seeing right now. And I just seen this, and I'm going to document this. So, after the fight with uh, Bibble and Bitter Bill, Eddie Hearn was running around and starting firestorms that everybody, all the fans gravitate to after the fight. Because I've noticed that. They'll go, there's certain fans that watch a fight, and they'll watch the same fight that everybody else watched, but they'll take what the commentary says and what the reporters and promoters say after the fight, and they'll say, yeah, every time, every fight. Every fight I've noticed. And in this fight, I've noticed, okay, they're doing the zone, and they're doing ESPN. So I'm like, why are they doing that? So you got ESPN commentary saying everything basically leaning towards Bitter Bill. And you got every uh, the, the zone commentary leaning towards Bibble. Because, well, Bitter Bill with ESPN and Bibble, he with the zone. So we can't be fair and unbiased and boxed. So we got to lean towards the guy we're promoting. Bro, you've been promoting this dude for the last couple of years now. What what more promotion you got to do to fight? So you so you got to promote this guy and put prop him up during the fight, just like how y'all did Marjamal. You got to prop him up and promote him during the fight. And that's just letting you know that fans ain't watching what they seeing. They're like, oh well, I heard he landed. Well, commentator, he got loud at this point, so Bill had to be landing more. It just overall, it's like disgusting. Every time we have a close fight now, you got a whole bunch of Casuals. A lot. Most of these people are casuals. Like I'm starting to realize now, most of these people who are whining after every close fight. Now I know we've had some close fights and some fights where we're like, we're, uh, man, that's a robbery. Ever since I would say the Lomachenko and Haney fight, I've noticed that when a fight is close, we usually have casual. I'm a, and I'll explain it during my live, but we usually have casuals, casuals crying. Usually. When a guy throws more punches, they'll say, well, that guy, he looked like he won. But then when the case is a guy who they don't like throws more punches, it don't really matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, how are you scoring fights and how are you? Because one fight, they'll be like, well, he threw more punches and he was pressuring them. Like how Nick Ball fights. Now, obviously, Nick Ball was fighting just like Bitter Bill was fighting. But for some reason, when they watch a Nick Ball fight, they're like, yeah, Nick Ball beat uh, Ray Ford. But then they'll go look at this fight with Bitterbill, knowing he's doing the same thing that Nick Ball was doing in the Ray Ford fight, same type of fight. Then they'll be like, nah, Bitterbill lost. It was a robbery. And you got Eddie Hearn running around saying that it was a uh, the judges need to be this and they need to be that. The judges need to be this. First of all, I've seen worse judges in a fight that Eddie Hearn has promoted. I've seen way, way worse judges. Like, let me give you an example. The one that Bob Arum, when Bob Arum hopped in the ring that day with Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn wasn't running around talking about no robbery then. Or it wasn't no robbery or whatever. He was like, oh, I thought it was a close fight. <laughs> Bob Aaron was like, I'll never bring an American fighter up over here with this scoring. Never. And a real robbery was Liam Cameron. If you was a boxing fan, Eddie, I don't, Eddie just worrying about his the uh, fighters he promoting. He doing a good job as that. But at the same time, you pushing narratives and you trying to uh, discredit everybody else's win. You know what I'm saying? Like, I heard... I've seen him give Canelo more credit in a loss than he's giving uh, Bitter Bib in a win. Why is Bitter Bib uh, in the middle of somebody scoring mishaps and everything? Bro, y'all had years to work with all these judges. They ain't going to say uh, recently, well, I don't think it was a robbery, but I know I know Carl Moretti. I know you do. Quit capping like y'all really just care about the scoring like that. Y'all never cared about the scoring. You're just doing that because you promote Bilbo and you was trying to show out. We've seen you do this multiple, multiple times. I've seen Eddie Hearn do this multiple times. 
Multiple times I've seen him do it. I've seen fighters do it, and Eddie Hearn get mad at the fighters. The same stuff he's doing. That's what pisses me off more. Why are you getting... I've seen them tell fighters in the ring, don't get mad at the decision. Why are you mad? Shh. Act professional. Then Eddie Hearn goes out there, man, the judges with this, this, and this, and this, and uh, something need to be done. And then you have fans come out here, yeah, something need to be done. This, this, and this. Bro, we've seen close fights for years. What are we talking about? They did the same thing after the Fundor and Tim Zoo fight. And guess what's going on now? Nobody's complaining about Fundor and Tim Zhu. They know who the winner was. After the fight, everybody like, well, Tim Zhu, I thought. I thought with Tim Zhu, if he wouldn't have bleed, if he wouldn't have been bleeding, for some reason they seen all the punches that landed in the Fandora Tim Zhu fight. Fandora Tim Zhu fight goes just like Bitter Bib and Bibble. Then for some reason, they act like they don't know how to score a fight now. And I'm gonna give you an example. Uh Fandora, he did the same thing Bibble did. Except Fandora was still Fandora was still jabbing after the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th round. That's the difference between Fandora and and t- uh, and um, Vivil. The difference between Vivil and Fandora is Fandora was still throwing a jab. That's why he won. After the fight, I said, hey, man, this is the first time I've seen Fandora jab for 12 rounds without trying to box and brawl the whole time. A lot of people didn't even notice that. That's when I noticed then, like, bro, wait, breaking down fights is a waste of time. It's a waste of time. People do not do not break down fights. They do not break down fights. They walk around call people casuals. Then you have some fans that are asked, hey, man, can you break down the fight, talk about the fight? Yeah, we can talk about it. As soon as we get to talking about it, nobody knows what happened. They're just reporting what Eddie Hearn and the commentator said. You got the people that's on the zone commentary and then you got people now thinking that that's normal yeah that's supposed to promote their fighter man get out of here with that crap this is why the sport of boxing is the way it is it really is this is why nobody wants to pay attention to this crap and i made a video a couple of weeks ago where i said it's sad because this fight should have been earlier this year because we could have got two or three fights out of this A lot of people didn't think that it was worthy of two or three fights. They thought that this fight was just worthy of one fight, and that's it. I said, no, I think this is a fight where you have um, a trilogy, possibly. But they should have started this in, like, January. When Bitter Viv had his first fight, instead of them saying, hey, yeah, let's let these guys get another fight and warm up, that's when everybody started to realize, like, what warm up? Why do they need a warm up? And they've been active the whole time. And if you go back and look at the fights they had, they really didn't need those. Only thing that happened since then was Bitter Bill got hurt and he was fighting injured. He's not going to say he was fighting injured out loud to try to discredit what Bill was doing, but he was fighting injured. I mean, that's obvious. But nine times out of ten, if you agree with Eddie Hearn on the fight, you might want to watch out because the dude can't score a fight, man, to save his life. He really can't. He usually always goes with the person he's promoting, so that's cool and everything, but bro, don't be out here discrediting somebody who only gonna be undisputed one time in their life. You don't become undisputed again unless you go to another weight class, but usually you don't do it multiple times, especially when you're 40 years old. But to have some guy out here, a promoter, talking like he a boxer, and I'm cool, a lot of people who uh, don't box, uh, no boxing. But this dude talking like after every fight, man, I know more than all these boxers. This round, this round, you got a lot of boxers that um, they lean towards that type of style, the boxing style. Most guys who don't have a lot of power, they gravitate towards Bilbo, so of course they're going to go with that. But a lot of guys don't know how to break down a fight, man. Like in America, don't know how to break down a fight. Don't know how to. Most countries, they don't, don't know how to. Most people don't know how to break, break down the fight. That's why the judges can always do what they want to do. There's no clear-cut anything. There's no clear-cut anything. The only thing that kind of helps people score a fight is watching Floyd Mayweather 
not knock people out for like 10 years. Watching Floyd Mayweather go 12 for like 10 years, they kind of helped everybody, but not really. Because most people, as soon as Floyd retired, they went back to, oh, well, uh, I like this person because of knockouts, and knockouts is why we watch certain people. So they don't even watch people who go 12 rounds anymore. There's fans that live by that. So with them watching the fight, they go with 12 rounds, of course they would think something's a robbery. They don't know how to score a 12-round fight. And for Eddie Hearn to gravitate towards that casual fan base, knowing that you have a job to do in a sport to uphill, uphold, allegedly. And for that to be the topic of conversation as far as the judging and scoring all the time, after every fight he does this. After every fight. Does this all the time. It's the same guy who seen Wilder go 12 rounds with Parker and was jumping out. Oh! Jumping around and running around the ring and everything. I don't know if everybody's seen it. Then Joshua got stopped recently. He went running around the ring after that. He was very gracious. He was very uh, upbeat. He making future plans already. Yeah, that guy. But um, I think he does a good job as far as the promotion he's been doing this year. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, bro, you, you you're doing over you you're doing too much, it's too much. Over your 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 um response to the result of the fight, it's over it's over it's overdone now, man. Overcooked. Relax. We understand that's your fight and everything, but you're making the sport of boxing look bad. To be honest with you. To be honest with you, all you're doing now is fi- making uh, people going to just complain about the fight. Every time. After every fight, we got people complaining now, the close fight. Fury and Usyk crying. Oh, man, I thought Fury won. Well, Usyk looked like he was doing something, all that stuff. So, you can't. we can't be doing that after every fight. That's my whole point about everything. After every fight, crying and complaining about the results, can't do it, man. Can't do it. But, yeah, I'm not that type of uh, That's why I don't want to be that type of channel. People that don't like it, you know what to do.